Uh, for those of you who don't know, a Pichu Kucha is a 20 by 20 presentation format that shows you 20 chosen images each for 20 seconds. In other words, we have 400 seconds to tell our story with the visuals guiding the way. Pichu Kucha means chit chat in Japanese. It was originated in Tokyo in 2003 with two renowned architects. Since then, 3 million people have attended Pichu Kucha presentations. We thought Pichu Kuchas would be a dynamic way to explore Brown Gardens arts exhibitions and artists online. Our twist is that our Pichu Kucha comes with a curated cocktail recipe carefully paired to enhance the aesthetic experience. In episode one, we'll walk, talk through some of the works and themes from adaptation, Artists Respond to Change, which is our spring 2021 exhibition. And we'll introduce a drink, Butterfly Gin Lemonade, created in honor of adaptation. We have the participants on mute, but the function of chat is enabled. If you have a question, post it there, and we'll try to answer some questions at the end of the slides. Adaptation features 48 artists. If you want to see more of the show, there's a catalog you can order from our website, and we've posted artworks from Adaptation on Artsy and Artspur. And now, on to our curated cocktail. Butterfly Gin Lemonade is the creation of our talented in-house mixologist, Max Fanwick. You can learn more about Max's libations and culinary creations at at dude who cooks. You should have the ingredients on hand, two ounces butterfly pea infused gin, one ounce lemon juice, one and a half ounce mint simple syrup, and a lemon twist for garnish. The directions are simple. Mix the tonic water, lemon juice, and mint simple syrup in a large glass with ice. Pour the butterfly gin slowly over the top in front of your audience if you have one. Mix the cocktail to complete the color change. Here's a visual how to. And here's the magic and the lemon garnish. Cheers. Over the last year, we've grown more aware of our interconnectedness. We've had to acknowledge our permeable national boundaries, shared airs, and the limits of personal space. Artists that we work with have coped with the pandemic dislocation in various ways moving, repurposing, finding inspiration in nature. Adaptation explores why and how artists adapt their art practice. The 48 artists in adaptation have shared their varied reactions to change. For some artists, lockdowns provided them time to experiment and focus. Polish artist with Merit Saigon created a daily practice. In his work, colorful optic fibers bundle threads together suggesting filaments that bind us together, even as, if, as people, we are physically apart. Marina Kolniskova in Germany was cut off from travel, art exhibitions, and friends. These restrictions resulted in a series of small works, Letters from Quarantine, precisely layered, embedded with handwritten paper and embellished brushstrokes. These intricate time poems became meditative moments of enjoyment for the artist. In the last year, I was dedicated to my studio schedule, Mary Merkel has told us. It was an escape for me. She had wanted to create a more minimal work for some time, one that was simpler, with no color, only Gampy paper, museum board construction, and graphite paper, pencil, excuse me, graphite pencil. The pandemic lockdown provided her the time to focus on that, and among the trees, too, was the result. Other artists turned to the outdoors for inspiration. Sarah Brennan, was locked out of her studio in Scotland. She found herself recreating trees she used to see on her daily commute. KG Neo silk screened images of brightly colored plants onto ribbon that he braided, imagining the vivid color and fragrance of these flowers as he hoped he would again once COVID was passed. Paul Furneaux, locked out of the same studio complex as Sarah Brennan in Edinburgh, spent his time in the garden. His works have the colors of emerging spring. He was aware of the drifting sunlight around the garden as it sh cast shadows of the surrounding buildings. The architectural forms themselves echo buildings for no saw in Tokyo in the spring of 2019. Two works address changing methods of storing and sharing information. 
John Garrett crocheted the videotape that records sounds and visuals into his dark curtain. The lockdown gave Louis Noss a chance to clean out thousands of now obsolete photo slides, but those of landscapes and travel he repurposed to create an entirely new landscape. Jin Suk So also found it a good time to review material she had in stock. She pulled 30 years of steel mesh remnants, sewing the claws into a cloth like Korean Bojagi. It brought back memories of her childhood folding paper. She folded the mesh cloth, colored it, and burned it with the freedom that differs from the steel mesh work made 10 years before. Blair Tate determined to create a sustainable work. She continued her explorations of weaving as a sort of text, but during lockdown, she was acutely aware of the limits of materials. She wanted to use all, waste nothing. She consciously wove to the very limits of her warp to minimize loom waste, creating gaps by piecing her strips together after weaving, not on the loom. Noriko Takayama of Japan and Jinj Laki of California addressed the virus more literally. Takamaya created two structures interconnected like the DNA and protein of the virus. In her work variant, Lakey used golf clubs, golf tees, to reference a president with non-pandemic priorities. The white twigs refer to bones of those who died unnecessarily as a result of inattention. Adaptation includes works influenced by changes besides the pandemic, like climate change. Polluted water, fires, extinction species concern Niha Puri Deer in her native state of Uttarakhand, India. Fire was the concern of Adela Akers too, who was evacuated safely from her fires near her home and studio in Northern California. The environment was also the influence for the approaching storm by Nancy Konigsberg. With so much of the world not paying attention, she wondered what might lie ahead. She relied on familiar processes and the narrow gauge wire she often uses, but placed a greater emphasis on the density of the work to indicate the seriousness and gravity of current events. Laura Foster Nicholson did not change her process during the pandemic. Her subject matter, however, moved dramatically to images of climate change and pending disaster. She considers the floods and the irreplaceable beauty of Venice in this weaving, the waters rising among the columns at the Procurati illustrated by glittering threads. The environment had a more literal impact on Yasuhisa Koyama's work. In 1982, heavy rains in Japan destroyed his kiln and inventory. In rebuilding, he found a chance for a fresh start. Inspired by the powerful landscape of the United States, he began making non-traditional asymmetrical forms that suggest winds, canyons, and mountains. Another reason artists change their practice can be to meet an artistic challenge posed by a competition. Naoko Sereno created a sculpture for a competition in Japan that was successful in large scale and won her a prize. Here, she wanted to recreate the work in a smaller scale so that it too feels as if it is imbued with stored energy. Jim, Jim Bassler's challenge was issued by the Textile Museum in DC in 2012. The museum asked artists to create a work inspired by an item from its collection. Bassler chose an ancient Burmese shirt covered with magical and sacred symbols called yantras, which evoke protection, good luck, and prosperity. His version features positive images that reflect his involvement running marathons. In 1970, Canada wanted to give a gift to the United States. The country held a competition in which Mariette Rousseau Vermette won this with this maquette. It was realized as the curtain for the Eisenhower Theater at the Kennedy Center, which hung there for 30 years. The interlocking design is a symbol of the unity of all nations in friendship and progress. An unexpected encounter with a new material set Kari Loning on a new path a few years ago. She was moved to try basket making with long thin akibia vines that she literally tripped over, a departure from the uniform stiff round reeds she had worked with for years. The akibia has organic variations that interest her as does repurposing an invasive species. Moving from the country to the city inspired new work for Anne Henriksen. She collected abandoned gloves and mittens along the cycling paths in Copenhagen. She made the gloves float between threads to create this work. From this poetic waste material, Henriksen proposes a kind of urban fall 
new growth can arise. That ends our whirlwind presentation. Thank you for joining our first Pichu Kuchu with a twist. For more information, look for the adaptation catalog on our website at browngrotta.com and see the pieces in the exhibition online on Artsy and Artspur.